All right, we're in the shop today. I'm sure a lot of you will recognize this motor if you've been around the channel since the beginning or you've gone back and watched my older junk, but uh, this is a 1948 Ford 337 flathead V8. Came off of a mobile power unit and it's got the tag here. The 337 was the industrial flathead and uh, it's pretty well impossible to find much for these. They didn't get hot rotted like the other flathead V8s because these weigh over 900 pounds and it wasn't too practical and the aftermarket back in the day didn't build much performance or hop up parts for them so they were basically a work motor only like this one's case it's uh it's a little unit that has its own frame and radiator and then it's got a big pulley system off the back with its own clutch you know, just like a bell housing with a pulley behind it. And uh, I got that. It had been sitting outside, so of course it seized up. And you know, flatheads are famous for sticky valves. And they look like that once they get any form of moisture in there. But I filmed a couple videos, tore it down, got it in here on the stand, and then that's where the videos quit. And that was a few years ago now. And because these things are pretty spendy to do anything with and you know I was fighting things and didn't want to break anything where it's hard to find stuff for it basically got shoved into a corner and covered up and I haven't really messed with it much since although last year I did start pulling valves out of it and got a good majority of them these are all you know freed up I don't think they'll come out unless it rotates over a little bit more or something i forget where i left off on it but uh it was this one that i was fighting the most and i filled it with atf and diesel and that's been in there for a year and it hasn't settled down at all so this valve is absolutely seized into that guide and then if you look in the cylinders here and then over here that's not leaking down past through the ring, so that's concerning. So there's going to be a few issues as to why this thing's locked up. But um, I figured it's been long enough. I keep getting comments about what happened to this thing, so we'll uh, keep making videos on it. Not sure how this is going to go. You usually ruin valves at this point when you can't get them out when they're like this. But um, I'm sure I can track some down somewhere if I ruin a couple. But yeah, we're going to get angry with it. See if we can get these last valves out. And then I'm probably tip it upside down. Pull the crank out and then start hammering rods and pistons out. With hopefully without breaking the rings. There's not much of a ridge, but there's a little bit. So we'll just have to go easy on it. Might uh, emery cloth them first to be safe. But yeah, that's it's kind of the game plan. So let's get after it and see what we can do with this thing. Let's see if I can break something. Kind of shock it in that guide, see if it does anything. Sounds pretty solid though. Yeah, it's warm all the way out to it, so maybe that uh, diesel and ATF mix sounds like it's boiling in there, so maybe that'll help. Oh, let's hit it some more. Get in here and see if I can pry it up at all. Just ever so slightly get between it and the lifter. Might need a hammer for this. 
this. Soaked up some of that fluid some. The valve almost doesn't look as rusty as it did before a year ago. So there might be uh, a possibility here. So we'll put a good amount of heat in there on the top of that guide. Kind of focus it into the where it goes into the block in there and we'll see what that does. Well, it's good and hot. And, uh, Definitely looks even hotter in there. So let's give it some violence. It almost acts like movement, but I could be bending something too. It makes noise. Let's see if I can burn my hand on the block here. Oh. You know what? It looks like it's coming up. I got that other screwdriver. It's moving. Now it's all about the finesse. Look at that, she's coming up. Keep working on her a little bit. Maybe spray some WD-40 in there now. Oh yeah, there's definitely room for a chisel now. Oh, I, I like that cracking noise. That's probably good for it. Get this one in there now. Oh yeah, plenty of room. We'll go pry bar now. We want to kind of pry it up straight so we don't bend the stem of the valve. It's probably going to be hard to do, even though I can get under it here now. I don't want to break it. Take the pry bar and then put the screwdriver on top of it. Nope. Until I have to fight the spring out of the way. Close your eyes, this is probably frowned upon.
Nope, she got stuck there. Okay. Fine. Fine. It's a violin. All right, I got it up as high as it'll go where it gets stuck. I was able to pull the valve spring out of there. So I'll tap it back down till I see the end of the valve stem. And I'll just go in there and clean it up with emery cloth and see if that'll help get it through the guide or not. And uh, we'll see if that works. Almost, there we go. And I don't think I even screwed it up. Doesn't look bent or anything. Yeah, I think we're all right. Just uh, clean everything up good. Now we'll get, I think these are all free. This one might be stuck. Have to look at that one, but. I'll put this in my divider so I know where it came from. All right, well, we're gaining on it. I guess, uh, let's see here. So because the cam lobe is turned and the lifter's coming up, it doesn't allow me enough room to compress this spring and get the keeper out. I think that's where I was at on those. Along with that one and this one. This one's all the way down. So I'll compress the spring, pull that keeper out. And then as far as the other side goes, those are down for the most part. So I'll try and get them as well. They're nice and free at least. So keep filling spaces on this. So here's a way you can cheat using an overhead valve spring compressor. Just use a block of wood then take a magnet like so, get in here and Pull them keepers off. And uh, you can usually get them out that way. Well, I got this whole side out. Those went fine, no issues. And like I said before, because the position of the cam, the lobes are up and pushing up on these lifters, which doesn't allow me enough compress room to compress these springs and get the keepers out really. And as you can see, they're all up. So because I can't turn the crank, because we got rings sticking to the cylinder walls or pistons stuck, something, um, I'm gonna see if I can pull this cam gear. It's got a mark on it. And then the gear on the crank has a mark. So we'll just uh, put those back when it goes back together. But I'll pull these four bolts See if I can get that gear off of there and then hopefully grab a hold of the cam somehow. And hopefully it's not seized in there either. But I'll uh, grab a hold of it, see if I can turn it, get these uh, lifters back down, and then pull these final three out. And uh, we'll be set on the valves. And then we'll go to the bottom end. I was taking a punch and bending these little tabs back so I can get to the bolts. They're just a little keeper thing as a safety and uh, I noticed this bolt is loose so that definitely did its job although that's not a good thing that it's loose but all the other ones are tight so I'll bend that last tab back and we'll start pulling them out all right the bolts and the little retainer thing are off I'll just mark this and this just because that way I can go back where those are 
Hit this one one more time. Okay. Take this off. And we should be able to uh, do something here. All right, see if this thing will turn or not. Well, we got some movement. There we go. Those are pretty much all the way down now. So we'll uh, pull those last three valves. Both keepers there. There, they both fell out. These are a larger style. Well, there we go. They're all out now. That's one headache out of the way. I was definitely concerned about that one, but glad I didn't ruin it getting it out. All the others went pretty smooth. So I think as far as the valve train goes, we're going to be fine. Things should clean up and not be an issue. So I think because I can't exactly pull the cam out because this is in the way, I'll uh, leave the rest of it there for now. And uh, we'll flip her upside down and see what we can make happen in the bottom end. And uh, if we can free up pistons and rings or not. But uh, I think for now, we're going to call that a video. Got the valve train taken care of, so that's good. But uh, yeah, glad to be back on this project. Definitely uh, waited way too long on it, but regardless, we're on it now. So yeah, be sure to uh, leave a comment and like the video. And till the next episode on this one, I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.